As nation, you're just not going to believe this. You're just absolutely not going to believe this. This is video footage of illegal migrants from Africa at a New York City Council meeting actually complaining. You know, I mean, this is like unfathomable here. We're giving you free food, free board, free entrance into the greatest country on planet Earth. And it's not good enough. Listen to this. But at the shelter, the food, my kids cannot eat the food at the shelter. And on, on Ramadan time, we couldn't eat because when you come back for on the breaks, the food is no good at all. And they give us two months to stay at the shelter, and then you have to go out again with your luggages and the kids and find another place. It's very difficult. God forbid. Uh, and also I have a kid that is like 18 to 19 until now he doesn't have no school mm. so please help us welcome to America welcome to the real world you can't just get a free handout all you want every second of the day. Oh, but wait a minute. That's exactly what Tombstone Biden, Kami Kamala, the Clinton Obama consortium wants as long as you vote for them. What were they promised? I mean, the gall, the audacity. I'm going to literally rip my hair out right now. I am so there are Americans who are busting their hump every single day. You watching, let me know in the comments if you're one of them who can't even go to the grocery store, can't even get the food they normally get for their families, can't even freaking put the heat on, can't even pay for their electricity bill. God forbid they even try to pay for a small mini getaway vacation or holiday or whatever. They can't do that. Can't take their kids out. Gas is going up the roof because Tombstone Biden uh, used up all of our oil reserves. So now that the foreign entities are charging us up the wazoo, the barrels of oil have gone up. Inflation has gone up. And these illegal immigrants have the audacity to complain about free food, free room, free shelter, free credit cards. Are you absolutely out of your minds? I've got more too. Check this out. Holy mackerel. This is unacceptable. This is shameful time in New York history. This city is not friendly for all people. It is anti-African and xenophobic. Cette ville n'est pas du tout accueillante pour les Africains. Elle est raciste et xenophobe. Et on doit le dire. We came to share this testimony to let you all know in this council you all are responsible for this pain. Did we ask you to come over here? We're responsible for you. We have to take care of you. We have to accommodate you. We have to roll out the red carpet for you. We have to stop everything we're doing just for you. Have you ever heard of this thing called acclamation? Have you ever heard of this thing called earned citizenship? Have you ever heard of this thing of paying your dues? You're getting free room board and you're demanding that the city be more accommodating to you? That, uh, that it's xenophobic and racist because they treat you poorly? Oh, this is the, who asked you to come here? Who asked you to come here? And suffering that will affect us for generation to come. But you also can change this for better. Here's here's a here's a, a, a here's something you could do. Go back. Here's something you could do. Hasta la pasta. See ya. Wouldn't wanna be ya. C'est l'hôpital qui se moque de la charité. New York City should. By the way, do these guys look like they're they're proud to be here? They're happy to be here. Do these guys look? You you actually think these guys are going to assimilate? and take pride in America, contribute to society? 
Or is this just another, I got a lot to say about this, stick around. I think I know what's going on, stick around. At least live up to the standard it projects to the world. Instead of the mediocrity he has shown our community. African deserve dignity and respect. We are not animal. <laughs> this country has a habit to... <sighs> I'm so upset. You have a habit to receive all over uh. immigrants, all over community. Why is it going to be done only to the African? It's because it's an embedded protocol of racism and xenophobia in this city. You already said that. I want all my fellow Africans to know what it is that they will face if they come in New York City. I was born and raised in the greatest country of all time, the United States of America. But I am the son of immigrants. My parents traveled here in the early 70s from the Mediterranean, and they had me in Logan, Utah. My dad taught at Utah State University. They didn't know the language. This is during a very, very hostile time in the country towards uh, people from that area. They uh, had to learn from scratch. They didn't know the, the, the language that well. There was tons. I mean, you want to talk about xenophobia and racism. There was tons of that, not necessarily in Utah. Utah people were good. We moved to Evansville, Indiana. Uh, you know, think about it. Dark hair, dark eyelashes, dark eyes, a little toasty skin. I was surrounded by milk paste. Okay, my wife's uh, skin tone. Did I complain? Was it hard? Of course it was hard. Did my parents complain? Was it hard? Of course it was hard. Did we go to city council and say, how dare you? No, we knew we were in the greatest country on planet Earth. We knew we had to work our butts off. We knew we had to earn our citizenship. We had to contribute to society. How dare you complain when there's millions of Americans who can't even find a pot to piss in right now? You're going to complain? What do you want me to do? You want me to shut down the city? You want me to have diversity training and spend billions of more taxpayer dollars? What do you want me to do? You know what this is, Nez Nation? I don't believe immigrants are complainers. I don't believe that these complaints are uh, based on just themselves complaining in their conditions. I believe Biden, Obama, Clinton consortium promised these immigrants way more than they delivered. And what was the hefty price and cost? Well, not only our taxpayer money, not only our tax dollars, but the cost was they had to vote blue. Make sure they're doing, I mean, all these trials they're throwing at Trump, all this garbage they're throwing at Trump, they can't beat this president. They cannot beat Donald Trump legitimately. It is now so cemented in my brain. And I like to consider myself a pretty intelligent dude. I exercise a lot of critical discernment, a lot of critical thinking. I am not a conspiracy theorist, but it has never been more clear to me than it is now that they don't, literally, they don't think they can win legitimately. They know they can't win legitimately. They have to do everything in their power. These are paid for votes with our tax dollars. Watch this last clip right here. You're going to absolutely lose your mind at what this next African immigrant, illegal migrant, talks about the fact that New York City if it needs to find more migrant tri tri uh, translators that can speak every tribal language ever spoken on earth or else you're a racist. Listen to this. There are unique dialects that are also coming that I've never heard of that I'm learning now um, about. People from Madagascar are coming. You have people of uh, Burundi are coming. People from countries that are not common to us. Uh, so language access has been truly, truly a challenge, especially if you don't understand Pull out from Guinea and pull out in Mauritania, pull out in Senegal is very... Why don't you cry more? It's called freaking you're in a foreign country. You're somewhere where nobody even wants you here. Even the people who promised you all this BS, they don't really want you here. They don't really care about you. They only care about one thing themselves. So if you want to make something of this golden lottery ticket that you won, you need to work your ass off for it. Very different. I apologize. I'm very upset. Let me know in the comments if you're upset too. Give me a hashtag upset. 
Or just, you know what, forget that. Give me an angry emoji in the comments. So thank you because we have to push for language access because I have seen it, people telling me even to stay in the shelter, to wherever in the herd they cannot stay because when they ask them to um, reapply, they're not getting it. And so thank you for continuing the work. I do want to add on one thing. There is a, a, a significant amount of people who are literate. So written does not work. We have been sending voice clips to the migrants explaining. Oh, so now we have to teach them how to read too? They can't do that on their own? Can they do anything on their own? You want us to wipe your asses too? To them what their rights are and to understand what's going on. So it's not just written. We need vocals. Thank you. May I intervene for that? Because I actually taught a literacy class in Brooklyn and the library of Bushwick. And um, we have, uh, you know, in, in Africa, unfortunately for us, uh, learning how to read and write is a privilege. And a lot of our brothers and sisters do not know how to read and write. So they only speak their, um, I would say, native language. Uh, like I said, I'm from the Congo, so I was speaking only in Congolese, one of the many Congolese languages that I speak uh, with uh, my fellow brother and, and sister to help them out. So the language uh, barrier is, 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 uh, is tremendous. Uh, we at, uh, at Brooklyn, we were, we were, we are faced with that, that, that predicament and we had to talk. And we actually have like a six class because we had a morning class and then we have an evening class for the ones that were literate. So without that, it's impossible for them to do anything because they don't understand the language, they, they don't understand the way the city works, they don't understand anything. And you can't go nothing, you can do nothing. And uh, like I said, I was emphasis many times that, you know, we are African, we don't speak African. We have different specificity in Africa. I'm from Central Africa. My mom is from East Africa. My mommy speaks Arameric. My dad don't speak Arameric. He don't even understand it. I do because my mom is Arameric, so I do. But in, only in the Congo, you have like more, more than 500 languages. Swahili is, is, is being spoken in, in Burundi, so I can speak with somebody from Burundi, but I cannot speak Swahili with somebody from Mauritania. You understand? Uh, 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 in Europe, a Turkish don't talk for a French. A French don't talk for a, Sp a Spanish. So why it is that you will put everybody, everybody in Africa in the same bag and thinking that because they speak Asanya, because they speak Puel, everybody will understand. You see, I told you Akuna Matata, you couldn't understand anything. You see, so that's, that's what we need. We need people that speak the native language to teach to those people. That's what we're asking the city, and the city refused to acclimate. And, and of course, since they refuse, they must be racist. I mean, the entitlement, the sense of me, 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 the sense of, God, the, the unappreciation, the, the, the lack of gratitude is incensing. I am livid with the lack of gratitude. So here is my quick take, and I don't want to take up too much time with this, but most immigrants have no problem with hard work. Most immigrants have no problems rolling up their sleeves, getting that elbow grease, and earning their keep. There's something very strange going on here. These do not sound like typical immigrants. Typical immigrants are super appreciative that they get to kiss the soil that is the greatest soil that mankind has ever, ever uh, created a, a world on, a life on. And that's here in the United States of America. And they never complain. Real immigrants who are given the golden lottery ticket of entrance into the greatest country of planet Earth never complain. The fact that they're not only complaining, but they're complaining about things that are so asinine. They're complaining about being treated. I'm being treated. No, it's not. New York City's not nice to old people. What they sound like the biggest bitches on planet Earth. Yes, I said that. I am appalled as a son of immigrants. My parents raised us to always understand that hard work always wins. 
Complaining is counterproductive. It does nothing to help you achieve your goals. Whining, crying, and bitching does absolutely nothing to achieve your goals. You can do all those things, but you don't do them like this. You do them in private. So I'm under the supposition Biden, Kami Kamala, the Obama-Clinton consortium promised them way more way more promise them we're going to give you money we're going to give you a nice place we're going to take care of your kids we're going to put them in nice schools you're going to get amazing accommodations and they lie just like they lie about everything else they lied sorry africans sorry congonese sorry uh, uh Lututu or wherever you're from but they lied they lied to you it's probably not your fault you probably thought, okay, we just, I mean, I don't know. They're going to teach us how to vote, so we vote. We, they're going to tell us where to check, and we check. That's fine. And we get this amazing uh, buffet of goodies, right? Well, they lied. They lied. And you still need to vote blue. They're going to kick you to the curb once November is done. Once the election literally strikes midnight and the winner is declared, they're going to kick your ass to the curb. They might even deport you. So don't get too comfortable because if my boy gets in there, you're definitely getting deported. If your charlatan gets in there, you're still going to get kicked to the curb. I throw this off to you, Nez Nation. What do you think of my theory? What do you think of what I just said? What do you think of these immigrants complaining, these African migrants, illegal migrants, by the way? What do you think of them? They were probably flown over. I don't even know if they came through the border because, you know, Biden flew over because he thought it was embarrassing. Look, he flew spending our money again. I know you paid your taxes recently. This is where our tax dollars are going to. Egregious policies yield egregious consequences. It's not about personality anymore. You can hate Trump all you want. You can have Trump derangement syndrome all you want. This is a matter of policy. Yes, there's a lot of things he says. I go, dude, just stop. Just er, put on the brakes. Put on the vocal cord brakes. We don't need to hear that right now. But policy versus policy, this is a clear-cut choice. It's a clear-cut choice. Share this video with as many people as you know. Tap that thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you think. Consider becoming a member. It only costs you one cup of coffee for an entire month of supporting the truth so I can keep creating free content. We just opened our free Discord for members only, exclusive. It's an exclusive location. If you don't know what Discord is, where we can go interact, comment, you just sign in. It's like an online, beautiful uh, Nez Nation Discord where we can converse. I'm in there, but all it's members only. So consider becoming a member. Uh, as always, check out these videos up here coming up on the screen. God bless you. Become a Nez Nation insider. And God bless America. I'll see you soon.